Hey guys, Scott Donchkowski here with another Lightroom video. Today, we're gonna take a look at graduated filters. More specifically, reverse graduated neutral density filters. Um, so everybody knows how a regular grad filter works. Um, I have an example of a three stop, or sorry, a one stop hard edged grad filter on the screen here. Um, and basically, the idea is that you put this filter over your camera lens while you're shooting like a sunset or a sunrise or really anywhere that the top half of the image is darker or sorry lighter than the bottom half of the image so the idea is that you put this over the camera and it will block the light coming from that you know top half of the image and allow the bottom half of the image the light down there which is typically darker anyway to just kind of shine through so you're kind of fooling the camera into thinking that it's actually darker on the top, right? You're trying to control the exposure. You're trying to control the contrast in the image. And typically you would use these like at sunset or sunrise. Um, and a hard edged filter like this is what you would more typically see with a flat horizon, right? So something like uh, a sunset or sunrise over the ocean or really anywhere that has a nice hard edge like this. This is an example of a one stop. Um, we have an example here of a two stop and then another example of a three stop. Um, and these are all, like I said, just examples that you can buy online. Um, they also come in soft grads, um, but today we're gonna talk about reverse grads. So a reverse grad is something a little different, right? It's kind of a hard edged filter down here, but then it gradually gets lighter as you go up, right? So perfect kind of filter to shoot um, sunrises or sunsets, um, where you really only want the middle part of the image to have the biggest effect, right, of, of it being darker, because that's typically where the sun's gonna be, and that's gonna be the brightest part of the image, and then gradually it will get lighter, or sorry, the filter will get lighter as you go up. And you want this hard edge right here so that you can just break, you know, the, the uh, exposure right at the bottom of the image. So this is an example of a one-stop reverse grad. We also have a two-stop reverse grad here. You can kind of see the difference a little bit more, right? The center right here is just a little darker um, than the top half here. And then a three-stop is kind of the same thing, just a little bit more um, oomph. Uh, in the filter. So three stops right around here and then it gradually falls down to two or one stops as you get up here, right? It's a grad, it's a very soft grad up here, but then a hard grad right here. So how do you do this in Lightroom? A lot of people ask me this question because these filters are expensive. Um, regular grad filters or you know the decent kind like from Lee or Format or Singray can be anywhere in between 80 to $160 a piece um, for a really good quality um, ND grad. Um, and the reverse grads, the ones that do this kind of thing specifically, are even more expensive, typically. Um, Singray typically makes the best ones from what I've heard. Um, the Format High Tech makes some. There's also a couple other companies that make some um, that probably aren't very good. Um, but this particular process is, I, I guess, uh, pretty difficult to replicate. Um, Lee does not make um, uh, reverse grads, and I really like Lee filters. I, I use Lee filters all the time. Um, and I haven't given up on them yet, even though the cameras that are coming out today have greater dynamic range, so it allows us to do a little bit more. Filters, I think, still have their place. Um, so I tend to use them quite a bit, sunset, sunrise, that kind of thing. Okay, so in Lightroom, you may already know that we really can't do this with one filter. So what I wanna do is I wanna show you kind of an example of how to create the filter first. So this is an example, it's just a white page um, created in Photoshop. It's just like a four by six inch image, just white. And what I've done is I have created a reverse grad from scratch so you guys can see it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna reset this image and we're gonna go um, step by step to show you the process of creating it. Now, don't be worried if you don't have like a white image like this. I mean, you could take one with your camera to practice on, but the idea here is just to show you on a white background like how this filter would look, okay? So obviously we need to go to the graduated filter tool and we're gonna create a the first layer of this reverse grad. Um, 
typically when you're doing graduated filters in Lightroom, you're only using really one filter, you know, one instance of a filter. So for example, if you're, you know, if your sky is a little brighter than your foreground, you might come in with a grad filter, you know, and just sort of try to darken up that sky. Let me make this a little darker so we can see this. I'll just put negative four here. So you may come in with a grad filter like this and kind of just bring it down on the sky and make everything up here a little darker. But what you may not know is that you can do a reverse grad. So that's what we're doing here. So I'm gonna do this again. I'm gonna type in negative four. So we can just see this. You probably wouldn't use negative four um, <laughs> ever. Uh, maybe, maybe not, I don't know. Uh, but we're gonna do this so you can actually see it a little bit better. So how to create a reverse grad. Number one, I'm gonna start with uh, negative four up here. And I'm going to go in the opposite direction, right? I'm gonna drag from the bottom up and you can see that I'm creating this, this is the reverse grad, this part up here, right? It starts right about here and then it gradually gets lighter as you go up. So we're gonna put that end right about here and you can see there's our nice reverse grad. Now, let me do that again so you guys can see it. Follow along. Um, sometimes if you use this filter, you know, you. If you're just kind of clicking and dragging, you get this weird, like it'll go this way or it'll go this way. You can't really get it straight. So to alleviate that, what you're gonna do is you're gonna hold down the shift key. A Mac or PC, it doesn't matter, shift key. And then you're gonna click and drag up and you'll get a nice, you know, straight horizon with this filter. So I'm gonna take that, I'm gonna drag it up a little bit more into something like this. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new one. So I'm going to go over to the toolbar or the, the panel on the right hand side of the screen. I'm going to click new in that grad filter and then I'm going to do plus four over here. So the first filter was at negative four. The next one is going to be plus four and I'm going to click and I'm going to drag up again. Now, the nice thing about this kind of work in Lightroom is that you know, you can control whether the bottom part of the filter is a hard edge like this or a soft edge like this. And let me hit the return key here and you can see now we have this really cool grad filter. It's a reverse grad, but it's got a soft gradient right here. So it can be used a little bit more uh, easily when you have mountains or things that are kind of, you know, coming up in your shot right here. Um, the only way that you can buy reverse grads is in a, where the bottom is a hard edge like this. So that's, it might not be very useful um, in most respects because n not always do you have a hard horizon line to delineate, you know, the area that is lighter on the top of the image and darker on the bottom. So using Lightroom to do this is way more, you have way more control over the actual filter itself. All right, so let's do that again. I'm gonna hit reset and we're gonna do this one more time just to kind of show you what's going on. So again, the first filter we're gonna put at negative, whatever the value is, we're gonna do negative four just for, you know, so you can see it, but if it's, if you're gonna do negative two or negative one, obviously you can change that um, in here anytime you want. So we're gonna do negative four just so you can see. And again, we're gonna hold the shift key and we're gonna drag from the bottom up. So I'm clicking and I'm dragging from the bottom up. And you can make this part, you know, as graduated or ungraduated as you want. You probably wanna make it nice and big like this to have the gradation really smooth. And then we can drag this up a little bit. You typically want this line right here, the bottom edge, to be somewhere near the horizon, okay? So we'll just pretend that it's the route right here. And then we're gonna click, go over to the right-hand side of your screen and we're gonna hit new. And then on this one, we're just gonna type in the opposite of that, right? So if you did negative four, you're gonna do plus four or just four, right? If you did negative three, you would do plus three or just three. And we're gonna click and drag in the same direction from bottom to top. Again, hold the shift key, click and drag bottom to top like so. And then you can place this part wherever you want. So if you want a hard edge, you can drag this down and make it nice and hard, or you can drag this up and make it a soft transition. So either or. Now we have this just nice, um, really soft, darker area right in the middle, right where the sun would be. 
And that's it. That's how you create a graduated neutral density reverse, excuse me, reverse graduated neutral density filter in Lightroom. So let's see this in practice, right? Okay, so the first image we're gonna take a look at is this one right here. And we, we have an image here of um, Half Dome. This is from Olmsted Point in Yosemite National Park. Um, and you can see that the middle part of the image right here where the horizon would be is really, really light. Um, it kind of tapers off in darkness up here where the clouds are, and obviously it's a lot darker down here where our foreground is. But right here in the middle, it's really, really, really light. And there's not an easy way in Lightroom um, to just get this area you know, to be darker. I mean, we could use like a radial filter, and we could kind of come in here with this radial filter and try this, right? Let's invert the mask, and then we can do negative three. Um, but that doesn't really look that good at all. Uh, not, I don't know um, why you'd want to try that. It just doesn't really work. You don't have the control. So we're going to delete that. And we're going to go back to uh, the original plan here, which is to create a reverse grad using the grad filter. So I'm going to click on the grad filter. I'm going to type in, I'm going to start with negative three. So negative three stops, minus three stops. And then we're going to do what we did in the previous example. We're going to click and we're going to drag from the bottom up something like this. And what I'm doing is I'm just kind of looking at the effect that this is having on the entire image, right? So do I want it a little higher? Maybe right about there looks pretty good. This section doesn't matter on the bottom here. I'm really only interested in how this is affecting the image on the top here. So right about there is probably where I wanna put it. You can see we have some nice blue sky back here. All right, and then I'm gonna hit new again, and the next iteration of this filter, we're gonna put in plus three, okay? So then we click and we drag from the bottom up, and then we can put that filter right about there. And maybe we'll bring it up a little bit, something like that, and then we'll hit return. All right, so there we go. There is our reverse grad. Now let's see what it looks like before and after. Before and after. Super cool. All right, let's take a look at another example. Um, Here's just a simple snapshot that I took um, years and years and years ago. Um, we have this amazing sunset uh, in Mount Shasta. Um, the mountain is literally behind me, but the clouds over here looked so nice, I just opted to take a quick snapshot. And this works really well for this example, okay? So same concept, negative three with the first grad. Click from the bottom up and just drag like so. Bring this up a little bit more. Something like that looks pretty good. Okay, and then a new filter. And then we're gonna just do plus three and then click and drag up again. And we'll put that right around here like so. And there we go. Before, after, before and after. Bingo, super, super useful reverse grad. One final example, come over here. This was shot in Iceland, um, I think two years ago, <clears throat> but we'll do, this, we'll do the same thing. Negative three for the exposure, click and drag, hold the shift key down to get a nice clean straight line. And we'll kind of bring this up a little bit like that. Negative three looks a little too harsh, but I wanna show you that you can change this at any time. So we're gonna leave that there. We're gonna do new which we are on, plus three, and then click and drag up like so, and we'll put that exactly where we need it to go, bingo. Before, after, before the filter, after the filter. Okay, so I said initially that, that negative three is a little too harsh, so let's change that. To change these, you'll see that we have two pins right here, these edit pins. All right, so the first filter was at negative three. Let's change this. I'm gonna just click on it, and then that allows me to change or add features to this particular grad. So we're gonna do negative two instead, and then with this one, we're gonna do just plus two. There we go. And then we can put this, click and drag up or down, put that right about there, and then this one, we want that right around there. And there we go. Click done, 
Let's go back in here and just see the before and after. So there's before and after, before and after. Awesome. But that's not all. With the Lightroom CC, um, we have the ability to go in and refine the, um, we can refine where the adjustment happens. We're not limited to just, you know, a grad that looks like this, right? Where we have this hard line here or soft line if you're, you know, if we're using Lightroom. We, we don't, we don't, we're not limited to this just straight line. We can come in and we can brush out areas where we don't want, um, we can refine it. We can where we don't want the adjustment to happen. We can actually brush out the overall effect. Okay, so let's go back to this image and we'll see that. See, look at the the mountains right here are a little too dark over here. They're a little too dark. So what if we told Lightroom, hey, don't apply the adjustment to this area or this area? Well, there's not an easy way to do that manually. Um, you, we don't have uh, filters that can, you know, block out. The, where the mountains are, that just doesn't exist. We're limited to, you know, straight lines because th that's just how these things are produced. Um, but in Lightroom, we can. In digital, we can. So what we want to do is we want to limit where the effect is happening. Um, you can see that right here in the mountains, it's a little too dark. It's a little too dark over here. And what we want to do is we want to adjust the brightness. We want to make this section brighter. We don't want the darkening filter to apply right here or right here. We want to just let this you know, be as bright as it normally was. Um, and so you'll see that obviously we have the two filters here. One is the darkening filter and one is the lightening filter. So we want to adjust the darkening filter. So if you can see here, if I mouse over this, you can see that, you know, that's where the darkening effect is happening. So we're going to use Lightroom to paint out this section here and this section here. Okay. So again, we're going to click on that icon right here, this little, um, pin. We're going to go to brush. And then you can see that I'm going to hold down the option key. If I hold down the option or the alt key on a PC, I get to the erase brush. If I let it go, I'm on brush A. I have a choice of brush B. And if I hold down the alt or option key, I get to the erase brush. That's what we want to do. We want to erase the mask right here and over here. Now, two other things I'm going to do. I'm going to make sure my flow is at 30 and auto mask is turned off. I don't want to paint this area at 100%. I don't want to paint at 100% opacity because it's going to be too obvious, you know, what I did if I paint that strongly. So I'm only going to paint at about 30 or you can even lower this more to like 25 or 20. Really, really, really low. Okay, so then what we're going to do is we're just going to paint. I'm just going to come in here and I'm just going to paint this out like that. And I'm going to come over here and I'm going to paint this out like that. And there we go. Less is more. Okay. And then let's see what happens before and after here. So there's before and there's after. We can probably do a little bit more here. We'll come over here and just paint a little more and paint a little more like that. Before, after, before, after. Now I don't really get that weird, you know, darkening that I see over here and over here. <clears throat> Let's do that with this one too. We'll come over here and you see how this area right here is a little darker and this area here is a little darker because the horizon isn't perfectly straight or level. Um, there's objects in there that obviously are in the way and so they're naturally going to be affected by the straight edge of the, um, the graduated filter. So again, we're going to come up to the top one and then we're going to hold the option key and I'm going to look at my brush. Where are you? Click here, brush, hold down the option or alt. I'm on erase, flow is at 25. And then I'm just going to just kind of paint over here. And there we go. So before, after, before, after. Really nice. There we go. Bingo. And that is how you do reverse grads in Lightroom. Really simple, awesome tool to have in your in your bag. Um, so yeah, there you go. Um, if you like the video, please click subscribe on the bottom and we'll see you next time.